most of the end panels. We want these panels to protrude about 5 eighths of an inch, as you can see here. Of course, you can use a measuring tape for every single panel you put up, but if you have a lot of panels to put up, it's so much easier to have like a template that is uh, showing you that exact distance. And an easy template to make is this one. You pick up your pencil. If you don't have one, get a pencil or a piece of scrap wood, and then you uh, take a piece of masking tape and you add that 5 eighths of an inch from the end of the pencil. By doing that, it's so easy to hold up the pencil when you have uh, put the panels in place and you had clamped it to the side of the cabinet and then adjust the panel uh, and then check the distance with your measuring template. This tip is only for you if you're installing laminate countertops and you need to cut a hole for the sink. Because when you do cut that hole, you will have that piece in the middle dropping down if you don't support it in any way. And you have to be careful not supporting with your fingers because you want to get through this project with all uh, 10 fingers still attached to your hands. So what I do is I take one of my adjustable um, supports I use for when I'm using my uh, table saw and I put it inside the cabinet and lift it up so it supports under the countertop. And uh, by doing that, I can cut all the way around. Sometimes I have to uh, turn my uh, support around so I don't cut in my support. But with a little uh, uh, tinkering, you will be able to uh, have that support sitting there and supporting that piece of countertop you're cutting away and you don't have to worry about holding your hand in there or in any other way supporting it. It uh, sits perfectly fine. This tip is for you if you have black, brown or dark grey panels that you are using for fillers uh, or panels. And uh, when you cut those, even though you have a new blade on your table saw, there might be a little bit of a different color on the edge of those pieces you cut off because some of the uh, veneer or whatever is sitting on top of that particle board is uh, flaking a bit. One easy fix to uh, sharpen up that edge is to take either a, a, a brown marker or a black marker or even a, uh, a pencil and uh, run it along the edge where you have just cut. Then you will basically uh, create a colored edge of that piece of filler or panel uh, instead of having that light colored particle board uh, showing. It's very effective and I am uh, sure you'll like it. Whenever you're cutting materials from IKEA made from particle board or from MDF, which is even worse, uh, you will create a lot of dust. And that dust just sticks to the surface of especially the uh, foiled uh, drawer fronts and doors from IKEA. And an easy way to get rid of that uh, while you're installing the kitchen before you do the, you know, the final complete cleanup of the kitchen is uh, to use one of those uh, dust gloves you can uh, get in any uh, store that's selling uh, parts for cars. Because uh, I believe this one was invented to, to uh, dust off the interior of a car. Anyway, I use one of those and it's very effective. You just have to uh, clean it every now and then. But um, if you're only doing one kitchen, it really shouldn't be a problem. I suggest you get one of those or maybe use a Swiffer. A Swiffer will probably be as good as this one. The only rule you have to follow when you pick a sink for your sink cabinet is that the cabinet is either the same size or bigger than the sink. However, no rules without an exemption. And if you're having the apron sink, like this one showed in the picture, you need to have a sink that fits the cabinet. And you cannot take a 24 inch sink and put in a 30 inch sink cabinet, because then you will end up with a result as you see here. And I am sure you can see what the problem is, that we have those two openings on each side of the sink. And uh, 
I guarantee you that the guy at IKEA who recommended this to my client, he uh, did not think of that because uh, normally you can have a small sink sitting in a big cabinet uh, unless it's an apron sink. So uh, this was the situation uh, we ended up with because they had it changed to an apron sink when they went to IKEA to order all the cabinets. And when I started installing, we were kind of uh, past point of no return when we came to this. And the only way to rectify the problem was to add those two small pieces of material, which is a five inch straw that is cut to the width of the opening and then installed with the brackets that uh, comes with the reinforced rail for the sink cabinet. It's not a great solution and I cannot recommend it. But in this case, it was the only uh, viable solution for us. And you have to remember, if you do that, you have a cut in that MDF uh, piece of draw front sitting next to the sink. So you have to be generous with some transparent silicone cork around that piece. Otherwise, water will get in and it will start to bulge up. So uh, it won't look good and we don't like that. So don't put yourself in that situation where you have that small apron sink sitting in anything but a 24 inch sink cabinet.